Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. Today I had an idea for a patch with Qubit Cord, which I have uh, put in my rack just recently, and I kind of wanted to do it with you. I wanted to walk through the patch with you. Um, this thing has like four or five outputs, and uh, there's lots of fun to be had with anything that has multiple outputs, especially if they have a harmonic relationship with each other. And that's exactly what the cord has. It has a root, third, fifth, seventh, and a mix output, um, which can do uh, all of those intervals in a chord. So I had an idea that uh, I was going to send them out to individual VCAs and we were going to arpeggiate them basically with gates. And that's what we're going to do. So first step, we're going to take the root out. We're going to put it into in one of my VCA. We're going to repeat this for the third and all of the other ones. We'll be using Quadrax as our main envelope generator it offers some nice features, including to use exponential envelopes, which is how we're going to start first. I want an exponential decay on this. So let's go ahead and just get that set up. So all you're hearing right now is a tiny little bass drum from uh, the VPME QD. Uh, I just want it as a little metronome as we get started. So now we got to get something into Quadrax to, uh, actually, no, <laughs> we got to output. Here, let's go ahead and do this first. I'm going to put each one of these outputs into one of my filters three filters down here. The last one has two channels. That's the popple. It's kind of like stereo. So we're going to put all of our outputs into a filter input like this. Slapping my cables all over the place, aren't I? And then we're going to take each one of these outputs and put it into an input in our mixer here. And I think we're going to be using the microcosm to give us some effects, because I recently hooked it up to the aux send on the mixer that this pan mix goes to. And it's just kind of a perfect, perfect sound for what I like to do. I have it MIDI synced to this whole system uh, via the Keystep Pro, which is always acting as a happy bridge in between me, the CV, and everything else. So let's get a Unity volume up here. Sorry if my beard is scratching on the microphone. And sorry if I'm blocking the shot right now. We're just going to give these a little pan. So now technically we have our main signal chain set up. Obviously we're not hearing anything. I think we will hear something if I go like this. We do? Okay. Let's turn up our cutoff frequencies for right now. There we go. So now we're hearing all four voices and I can change waveform, and you can already hear the hologram working on our ship. If I turn up the space here, we'll hear that. Isn't that nice? So let's go ahead and turn down the uh, just through our quad VCA. Now what we need to do is get signals to the Quadrax. The Quadrax is an envelope generator. We won't hear anything until it gets a trigger to pass something into the quad VCA. So what I'm going to do here is set up PAMs to uh, to do this. Actually, wait, no. Actually, no, I lied. We're going to use Steppy. So let's zoom in on Steppy, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. OK, there's Steppy. Steppy is a gate sequencer. It's getting a 16th note clock from Pamela's new workout, which is next to it. And it has four outputs. Uh, I think gate sequencers uh, are one of the most important things you can have in your modular rack. They provide an incredible amount of value um, in terms of creating custom rhythms. Um, I think a lot of people think of uh, your rack voice as being something that, um, you know, the note event and the, the gate event happen at the same time, but it's much more interesting if you separate them. So let's get this patched up. I'm going to patch each one of these outputs of Steppy into a trig input of our Quadrax, which again is our envelope generator. Now, when I begin to add steps to this, we're going to hear each one of the voices coming out of chord. So let's go ahead and do that for everything. I'm going to select channel B. And actually what we're going to do, I know this seems dumb, but we're going to fill in every step. And the reason that we're going to do that is because this thing has probability. And we're going to use probability on each channel 
to get a diverse sort of shifting relationship between our outputs. So how we do that, we hit edit, we hit prob, let me turn this down. We do that for every channel. I think probability is very important in any modular device. And I actually have a Metron coming, which is gonna give me more probability. Okay, well, that's basically it. Okay, so how can we make this more interesting? Well, the first step is playing with the voices on the chord. You can see this voicing in right here. Listen to what happens when I change this. So let's go ahead and give that some stepped modulation. I'm going to use Mimetic Digitalis for that. So let's uh, get down onto Mimetic Digitalis and talk about how that works. Okay, this is the noise engineering Mimetic Digitalis. It is a four output uh, uh, CV sequencer that has some fun features. And you can see there's a little LED readout right here. This is sort of a Cartesian map of the 16 available slots for um, the, uh, the output. So each one of those slots can be manually adjusted or randomly uh, assigned via some of the controls on here. It receives a gate signal. We have a gate signal going into the end right here. And that's coming from my Keystep Pro on channel. See, it's blue. That looks like four. So I'm going to go to my Keystep Pro and I'm going to add some more gates and you're going to see this start to move a little bit faster. So I can completely control via the, uh, the gates down here the speed at which I move through there. Cool. So let's get an output of that going into the voicing. Take one and put it into voicing. Cool. So that sounds pretty good to me. I like that. I'm going to adjust the gates coming out of this. So it's not completely on a 16th note grid, and that way we get a little bit of uh, sort of changing pattern. I like the thing, but I, I want it to have a little different sound to it, a different revolving uh, heart relationship. Next step I want to do is get some, um, what do you call it, uh, one volt per octave data into the chord so that I can sequence its pitch. Let's talk about that. Okay, as you can see, there is a volt per octave in here on the chord. Um, and when you have a harmonic mode on, which is that green LED, if I remember correctly, uh, it should stay in key and we should be able to transpose in key, which should be fun. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a uh, output from my Keystep Pro, which allows me to press keys, and I'm going to put it into that one volt per octave and we're going to see what happens. Okay, voice four is now set. Let's see what happens when we press some keys. Okay, well, we know that works. Okay, this should give me some pretty fine control. I have the uh, pitch coming out of here. So the first thing I want to do is hit last step and 64. That'll give us all four bars. And I think I'm gonna change the rate of this sequence so that I have even more. So I'm gonna hit shift, time division, and one quarter. And that's gonna give us a ton of time over here. And then we'll hit record, and once this comes around to three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, here we go.
Oh, oh that's wonderful. Okay, we got one more thing I'd like to do, or maybe two more things. The first is I'd like to experiment with a little bit more modulation on chord and also our filters. So let's talk about filters first. Okie dokie. So remember we ran our voices into these filters, right now the cutoff's all the way up. Um, the Quadrax here, which is creating our envelope, has all of its outputs, its envelope CV, molted to two molts. And the reason that is, is because I always want that signal go in my BCA, but sometimes I want to use that signal for something else, and a lot of the times it's a filter. So I'm going to take these outputs, which are going into these molds, and I'm going to put them into the filter modulation inputs of the four filters that are associated with these voices. There we go. That's voice one. We can get weird with this <laughs> if we want. Let's try it real quick. Let's take output two here. Oh, actually, no. I'm going to take an output of Pamela's new workout here. We're going to put it into the waveform input. We're going to change this Pamela's track to a divided by two and a random wave. Now, PAMS only puts out a positive voltage, so we have to make sure that the knob is all the way to the left. That's nice. Let's use that. Remember, the goal here is to get something that's deterministic and also for lack of a better term, probabilistic. I think at this point we can add some more drums, okay? All right, that's good enough, I guess. Let's get Qubit scanned in here. This friend right here. I'm gonna take a pitch out. of my Keystep Pro, and I'm going to put it into Volt Per Octave. And I'm going to molt a gate out. And the reason I'm going to do that is because Scanned really likes to have something put into the Excite input in order to get it to really do what it's supposed to do. So we're going to molt the gate, which works as an Excite input. And then we're also going to put this, this friend right here, into the Quad RG, which is a Quad ADSR. Then we're going to take the out. Ooh, we don't need a long one. Take the out of the scanned, put it into the in of this first channel on the hex VCA. Take the out. We'll put this into our Rainmaker. And then we need the envelope out here. Oh no, there we go. Into the CV. Now I should be able to play scanned. So let's go to that channel. That's channel three.
Okay, so I'm going to take this out. I'm gonna have the Rainmaker go directly into an output channel of this mixer here. So I think we need a base, and I'm gonna show you a fun way to do that. Cool, I'm just gonna chill that out a little bit. Okay, so remember that we have one volt per octave going into the cord here to uh, do our root pitch. So we're actually gonna molt that uh, with a split cable. This is the pitch data right here. We're gonna molt this. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna take the split cable. Here goes our pitch for our cord back in. And this is gonna go into the clavis twin waves right here. Cause it has a lot of diverse uh, wave types and um, yeah, it sounds pretty good. So uh, we need to take an out of that Put it into this other VCA, and this is why you can never have too many VCAs, by the way, because something like Qubit Cord might roll around and you want to use all four outputs from it. Um, we will take the envelope of this CV. We need a trigger for that, uh, but before we do that, let's take the out. And this will go into Rainmaker, which we may or may not use uh, as an effect. Okay, so now we need a gate into our Quadrigy here. Let's use Pamela's new workout. Okay, so we have an issue. And that issue is that this is too high. Too high up in the, uh, in the range for a base. Now we do have a sub out, but it's still not big enough for me. So, well, you can do the simple way. <laughs> and that is to Tune it. Okay, that's good for now. Let's go to our second envelope here and let's give ourselves some release. There we go. Okay, that's pretty much the patch. You can play it now. Thanks for joining me. I'm gonna play this a little bit. Um, I hope it was fun. Uh, if you like this sort of patch from scratch video, let me know. Uh, there's lots more we can do with this. I just had this idea and I wanted to try it and I thought I'd do it on camera with y'all. Thanks for watching. My name is Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording and I hope you have a wonderful day.